the mail Yes, come a rotten bale Too much monkey business Too much monkey business There's too much monkey business For me to be fine It's about that time uh, Good evening, welcome to the third And sadly final film of this year's Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Gardens 2010 Summer Camp Film Festival, exploitation is what we call it. I'm your host, Dave Wilt, and I'm glad you all came out tonight for some ape action, some airy hilarity, furry fun, giant gorilla goodness, et cetera, et cetera. Tonight's film, Mighty Peking Man, 1977 Shaw Brothers production shot in Hong Kong with some location shooting in India. Uh, despite the advertising, last week's Conga that was a bit of a cheat if you were expecting a giant gorilla monster stomping through London, wrecking buildings, washing people, only to be stopped by the vast military might of the British Army. I mean, Conga didn't grow giant until like the last 10 minutes of the movie. He didn't really stomp on anybody or wreck any monuments to get dead or anything in London Bridge. In fact, he didn't really do much of anything. He just sort of stood around there until a handful of soldiers with machine guns and yeah. bazookas killed him. So, you know, Congo was kind of a wimp. Uh, yeah. Tonight's movie has befitting its status as a King Kong tribute, not to say ripoff. Um, the mighty Peking man, he's giant from the get go. In fact, from the very beginning of the movie, you'll see he's giant. And he does wreak a lot of havoc both in India and in Hong Kong. So he certainly delivers. Before we talk in detail about tonight's movie, my be King Man, I thought I'd mention giant monster phenomenon in films just sort of generally. Prior to the 1950s, relatively few giant monster films were actually made. You have Lost World 1925, which had dinosaurs, you have King Kong, which was obviously a gorilla, but also had um, some dinosaurs in it, and a giant spider. Um, you also have uh, Son of Kong, 1933, another gorilla, Mighty Joe Young, 1949, another gorilla, uh, One Million BC, which was actually made in 1940, it had dinosaurs and also a woolly mammoth, um, and Unknown Island in 1948, where you got some dinosaurs, and also had a giant sloth, which was actually a guy in a gorilla suit with a slightly modified face. So, uh, as you can see, the pickings were mighty slim indeed. And perhaps more importantly, or more interestingly, the giant monsters in these early movies fell basically into two categories, King Kong and clones, like Mighty Joe Young, and dinosaurs. And, and dinosaurs were actually giant in real life as opposed to gorillas, or you know, giant gorillas that we know of. So the dinosaur movies, you might say, in a way were more realistic because they actually had things that were giant in real life. The reasons for the relative scarcity of giant monster movies in this particular period are varied. Some of it was probably just the public's taste. Science fiction movies really weren't in a major genre prior to 1950, and then certainly not a major film genre later came. And special effects technology was also an issue. King Kong, Son of Kong, Mike and Joe Young, all you stop motion animation. That was very, very labor intensive, and there weren't very many feature films made using that. And in Hollywood, there was little or no tradition of a man in a suit made to look large type of effects. One Million Island does have that. One Million BC actually used, and you see there, an alligator, and they glued a fin on the back, and then they glued it on optically to make it look like a dinosaur. And the mammoth in One Million BC was basically an elephant wearing. So it didn't have a lot of special effects to make giant monsters. It didn't have a lot of um, variety of special effects in that period. Beginning in the 1950s, giant monsters, or as the Japanese would call them, kaiju, really proliferated. And we got a lot more variety, including but not limited to dinosaurs. We see there at least 20,000 fathoms, giant prehistoric birds, ants, Scorpions, tarantulas, grasshoppers, alien creatures, cyclopses, robots, and even normal men and women who just grew to be 50 feet tall or more or less. I'm not sure if it's significant, but generally, giant monsters in films in the 1950s and later tend to be non mammalian. Lots of giant lizards and insects. But aside from the giant gorilla slash missing link slash Bigfoot genre, you really don't see too much in the way of giant hairy creatures in cinema. 
Well, yes, if you want to dig really deep, you can find a few movies like Night of the Lepus, which was about giant bunny rabbits, and uh, there's a film called God Monster of Indian Flats about a giant mutant killer sheep. But, uh, those are exceptions. Mostly it's gorillas and dinosaurs, gorillas and dinosaurs, gorillas and dinosaurs. Giant monster movie technology has varied over the years, from stop motion animation to optically enlarging actual bugs or lizards and things like that to make them seem gigantic, to the man in the suit solving a little model buildings that we see tonight and we saw last year in the Godzilla films. And of course, the last several decades have seen the emergence of computer generated imagery or CGI, which now largely dominates the field. Each of these techniques has its advantages and its drawbacks. Some movies even contain combinations of two or more, to be sure. In fact, most of these movies do. In Congo last week, various optical and mechanical tricks were employed to allow the giant and the super gorilla to interact with real people. And we'll also see a fair amount of that in the Mike and PK Man tonight. What I've done is I've actually created a very short little video here and I'll show you some of that. Let's see. We'll start off with King Kong, and you'll see in this very beginning scene, in the foreground is actual people running, and then in the back, the back projection shows the animation of King Kong, which is stop motion animation. And then you'll see a cut from him grabbing, and this is the animation, he's grabbing this guy, and now they cut, and now they have an actual man in a giant mechanical king claw mouth as he chomps on it. These from 20,000 Fathoms, 1953, cuts between live footage of this policeman shooting at this animated dinosaur. <laughs> now you see the stop motion animated little guy who can swallow it. And you'll also be able to compare at the end of the sequence an animated scene Stop motion animation of the living stalking on a car. Okay, that's all animated with live action, back projection in the background. And now we'll see a scene from a Korean movie called Gangri from the mid-1960s, which is a man in a Sudasaurus, as they call it. And here we have stalking on the so we have a comparison of the two. <laughs> Here's a couple of scenes from tonight's movie that show Mike and King Man, and there you have a uh, prop foot stomping on the wall. And now you have a prop hand carrying the pillow, and he throws the pillow down, and prop foot stomps on him as well. This next scene is from the 1975 remake of King Kong. It's behind the scenes footage and shows uh, Jessica Lang, the actress, in the um, giant hydraulic mechanical hand that they used in this particular film. And they used similar things, as I said, you'll see it many times in Mighty Peking Man, where they have a giant prop hand squeezing the woman um, and working her. Now, this is um, from Mighty Peking Man in the beginning sequence. There you'll see live action and the man and the uh, Sudasaurus, and they're combined there. And most of the film has cutting back and forth. There's a guy who matters the man in the suit, then there's real people, etc. Run to and fro, hard working at the mill, never fail in the mail, yes, come a rotten bail. Too much money to pay. 